Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to my watercolour demonstration. This time I'm going to cover the wetting wet technique in watercolour to get uh, softness and, and, and soft edges into your watercolour. Uh, so, so wet and wet is, is where you are adding wet paint to an area um, which is still wet the, the, in the previous layer. I'm basing this painting on a scene here from Staithes in North Yorkshire. Uh, more on that in a minute. Uh, but just before I go on through this video, this video is free to watch, but not free to produce. If you do like these videos, then please consider supporting me via the Patreon system. Um, more information is at my site, which is www.patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T. Every month or two, I set a painting project up there for my members. And for a small pledge, in return, I give you a personal critique um, via a short little video um, with some extra hints and tips and um, some feedback on on your on your painting so for more details please go up to uh, my patreon site you'll find the links in the description of this video also don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not currently a subscriber to get automatic notification new videos and postings into the uh, site here so the scene is the village of Staithes on the North Yorkshire coast a very pretty village, um, much loved by artists over the years. In fact, there's a thriving artist group there um, and many art galleries. It's very reminiscent of um, a village in Devon or Cornwall. When I visit uh, about um, oh, uh, five years or six years ago now, um, it strikes it strikes me as very much similar to some of those pretty little villages you find along the North Devon and North Cornish coast in the UK. Anyway, so this is in North Yorkshire and this river coming down here is called the, the Staithes Beck and it's running into the sea which is over to the left. These boats here are special to the area. They're called cobbles, I think. Um, and so this is low tide, uh, a pretty scene. We're almost going against the light, contre jour, giving us lots of opportunities for arranging values. Um, the lightness of the rooftops here and the dark of the background, the, the dark wall uh, on the left hand side. And so this watercolor tutorial is all about, um, the, covering the wet in wet technique and so what we'll do here is these if you see these nice soft reflections in the river here a good opportunity to use that wet in wet technique technique so we're putting wet paint on top of a previous layer that is still wet it hasn't had time to dry out most of the time I guess in watercolor we're painting on a, a dry surface and adding in lots of uh, transparent layers as such on top of each other on top of a, a surface is already dry okay so let's see how we get on the paper i'm using is saunders waterford this is cold press and it's 300 grams in weight uh, size is 15 inches by 11 inches held down by some masking tape i'm often asked do do you uh pre-wet the paper do you stretch the paper uh no i don't so uh this has had no uh prior treatment um just just taped down it does buckle a little bit but i don't mind that um everything goes level when it dries out so the initial sketch I'm using a soft pencil here just to get in the outline of the major shape. So starting with the edges of the rooftops there, 
coming over into the middle. So I should say before I've got before I actually start drawing, I've I've got this mental picture of um, in my mind of where everything is going to be from a composition point of view, and going through the source photo, I'm trying to think um, what could be removed what could be added in um, I think I'm going to have a couple of boats on the left hand side maybe that small boat in the far distance as well and then these nice posts along the shoreline also they add a nice bit of dimension a bit of a, a vertical interest as well as there being of course lots of horizontal interest with the with the river and the tops of the boats and tops of the walls and the tops of the rooftops so as I say I'm just getting in the basic shapes here not spending an awful lot of time doing this drawing not too much detail so this is one of these cobbles bit of a funny name for a boat but I'm sure there's a reason or history behind that and then a second craft in here so these boats are fairly easy to do they're not close up don't need to have too much detail there's no no uh, cabin on top of them very simple boat shapes now this is the shoreline up the right hand side and uh, it's quite a simple shoreline we've got some big boulders in the foreground quite an important element are those two houses, those two rooftops in the middle. I'm going to try and make sure there's a good bit of contrast and a nice light hitting those rooftops. So we've got um, a range of, uh, we've, got a, we've got a big contrast there between the light of the rooftops and the darkness around them, the, the dark of the walls. So there's those posts going in maybe a figure if you've seen a lot of my other videos I'm quite keen to include figures wherever I can it adds an extra dimension an extra bit of interest into the painting a bit of scale as well a um, bit of movement maybe Just a bit of re-emphasis of the right hand side and the general slope of the hills on the right hand side. So I'm just trying to get these boats absolutely right before I go to the painting stage it's very important to get this initial drawing right before you start painting uh, because of the the paintings if the drawings out in some way then then the paint it can be more difficult when we start painting to try and uh, rectify any any um, um, errors or the perspective not right or that the curves of these boats not right so that's the initial drawing done step two lay down our first wash so the brush i'm using here is a fairly big mop brush this is a raphael 
uh, soft aqua brush. I just add in a few wet marks there to help me give um, a little bit of a, a softness to the sky. So this is the first instance where I'm using this sort of wet in wet type technique. Now I'm creating a bit of a mixture for the sky. The sky is going to be done very quickly. It's not it's not a massive part of the picture, but I just want to get it in very quickly. And so I'm I'm going into those um, damp areas and just letting the 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 slight slope of the board do its thing, and the paint is traveling down into those wet areas and giving a, a softness to the clouds. Now notice I went over the outline of the buildings and the rooftops. So that's going to give me another soft edge uh, where the warmth of these buildings is going to merge in with the coolness of the sky. So I'm not getting any hard edges here. Going in fairly loosely. As I say, I've, got, I've gone over the rooftops and straight away gone in with a a slightly thicker consistency so more pigment to water ratio if you like um, rather than it being more watery than the sky so, so this is a little bit thicker than the sky mixture now those hills on the right hand side they need to be fairly light in values so i've got a, a sort of a bluish green I suppose you could describe it as um, there and at the base of the uh, hill at the hill at the in the background just add a little bit of red to that should describe my palette on the right hand side uh, not a massive amount of colors not a massive number of colors but from the top I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, a cobalt green, cerulean blue, which I used a lot for the skies, then cobalt blue in the middle, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, a Windsor red, a light red, cadmium orange, and cadmium yellow. So, Coming down the uh, picture, uh, just continuing on with this first wash. Um, doesn't matter if I leave out little bits here and there. The white paper is still showing through. That they're, they're, they're sometimes they're deliberately left by me to to be future highlighted areas or very light areas. So I'm conscious to try and remember those areas I'm not going to paint, including these boats, I'm going to paint around these boats. They will be painted in a later stage. And I'm not sure if my source photo is correct, but I sense a real warmth to the, the shoreline. That's why I'm going in with some quite rich um, reds and oranges there. Now, the river surface slightly darker than the sky and I'm going to leave out in the distance here, in the middle distance, going to leave out a couple of areas that are going to be um, left unpainted and that's where the light is catching maybe um, some rippling in the surface. So uh, again, a little bit of uh, contrast there. Now going up to the shoreline. Don't, doesn't matter if it just bleeds in a little bit. This is the first um, wash we will be going in with some darker reflections, some more details to the shoreline too. Give it a bit more of a texture 
the, the boulders and rubble and stones and things on that far shore. Right. So up the right hand side here, a bit of a richer green because as we're coming towards us, we want the colours to be stronger, the values to be stronger. So got a bit of a richness there. Bit of splattering as well while the layers are wet below. So again, a bit of, we're using that wet in wet technique. Um, just splattering in this, again, a slightly thicker pigment on top of already wet, um, a wet surface, a wet layer. We might get a little bit of cauliflowers being created, but I don't mind that too much. You just, particularly on a hillside, it can add some uh, pleasing effects in there. Now, I'm going to wait a little bit because I want to add in these very soft reflections of the buildings in the river. And I need to judge it right. Obviously, the, the, the wetter the surface is, the softer the edges are going to be. Um, if I leave it till the layer is almost dry, then I'm going to get harder edges. And if I let it dry totally, we're going to, we're going to have a very hard edge. So this takes, um, a bit of practice, this timing, a lot of things in watercolor are about timings and when you, when you carry out your 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 separate uh, phases of, of the painting um, it just it just comes with uh, a bit of practice so for these reflections I'm using the same mop brush and a thicker consistency than the the river I've just done so it's it's drying quite slowly I haven't um, speeded up the drying process with a hairdryer just letting it dry naturally and with using paper like Saunders Waterford which is a cotton based paper the paint is going to dry slower so you've got a longer time to to work and you're going to, you're going to get nicer effects as well with a cotton based paper compared to um, a wood a paper based on wood so here's this darker color now it will dry lighter than this so I've got a that's another thing I've got to think about is the is the compensation going in a bit darker than how it's gonna going to dry and the reflections of on the left hand side the reflections are a lot darker and certainly very soft as we go into the distance up the river so I'm just sort of loosely following this line of uh, buildings the reflections of the buildings in the middle distance and notice with the brush I've got quite a nice edge on it um, which helps me uh, be a little bit more precise with my with my brush strokes my painting marks So some of those verticals there, they're going to be the reflections of those posts. Um, so I can just about, I can just about still see those posts, the uh, drawing outline um, just below that first washer did. 
So just a few very soft reflections of those posts. Everything's being allowed to mingle in with each other. So I've just speeded up the video uh, past some drying. I got out my hair dryer and uh, speeded up the process. So everything now is perfectly dry and with a smaller brush I'm going to go in with a bit of a darker value to the background hills but I still want to not make it too green so that's why I'm adding in a fair bit of blue into this mix and with a small brush and a good edge behind the houses will fairly quickly pick up the shapes of those rooftops in the middle catching the light just leave out a little a few little bits along the roof uh, ridge which could be chimneys um, I use my finger there just to smudge out a bit of the paint just to give a bit of softness and very quickly um, across the top across the skyline with this brush uh, introduce a sort of rough edge to the skyline. Now a slightly darker value as I come down to the the base of this hill. The brush now is almost uh, almost dry so I've got a few dry brush marks there which again hopefully gives a little bit of the impression of some uh, foliage and uh, the, the scrubland uh, coming down the hillside. Now simply add in a bit of a base to the bottom of the hill and up the right hand side with a warmer color now but still quite dark um, I'm adding in the shadow of the the shaded walls of those middle buildings and again this is where it's important to make sure the initial drawing is right with the perspective and uh, the lower part of that roof and the symmetry of the um, of this building here that I'm doing now as I'm painting these walls also notice I'm leaving out a few little marks here and there it just adds another dimension to the painting makes it a little bit fresher a little bit looser but of course they could be windows and architectural details on so just a few um, almost in a random way so I'm coming down now going a little bit darker to the base of these buildings and 
the there's there's a sort of retaining wall um, in front of this building down to the riverside. So again, use that finger just to help uh, mingle in a few colors, smudge it up a bit. Right, this retaining wall from the top down to the bottom, I need to connect it with the far shoreline and down to the uh, the far boat as well. And also this um, figure <laughs> that I introduced. Carefully paint around that person quite a small figure, not, not too big at all. Around the top of the boat. And I keep uh, revolving the brush in my hand just to keep getting that edge right. A lot of these marks are sort of horizontal. In direction. Just a few flicks um, in the background there. It's still a little bit moist, those background hills. And it will dry. What I'm adding in what I'm adding in now will dry a little bit lighter. Now this big uh, building on the left hand side. This is a, a large dark area of the painting and uh, I'm going to make sure the brush is fairly well loaded and with a soft brush I'm getting a sort of uh, as I'm pulling it across the surface I'm getting a a soft edge a jagged edge to the um, to the left hand side of the roof there so down the front of this building It's actually quite a simple picture, a simple composition, particularly as we're going against the light. And we can um, we we can add in a lot of variations on the left hand side here, with where the the sun is hitting these rooftops. So unless unless you're a stays resident, you won't. Um, really pick up on that but you just you're, you're trying to think from a composition point of view um, what are what are pleasing shapes and objects to have here that will help uh, the, the the composition and uh, the, the photograph um, I suppose helps in a way because it, it the composition sort of worked in in that photo and it's uh, this is quite a common uh, seam seen that some um, done by many people that paint in in the area maybe just a shadow going across that left hand roof I don't know what's causing it but I just think it needed something there across just to break it up a bit and we're gonna gradually come down now Being careful with this wall that, um, again, there's this retaining wall that continues on 
over to the left um, quite high I think compared to the wall in the distance but I want to have a an edge that's um, catching the light across the top so that's why I'm being fairly careful with creating this um, creating this edge so just where I am now there's a sort of slipway that's going down to the river that's why the light um, so the wall isn't going over the over that gap cooler and darker now with the shadows down to almost to the tops of the boats So near the top of the this middle boat. And I can keep going up into the shadow of the buildings and uh, and a bit of darker pigment there and a bit of splattering as well. With that same mop brush put a bit more paint on top a bit more paint on the brush and a bit of controlled splattering so fairly carefully along the line of the hull so we'll make this boat red in color And the next one a little bit darker, more bluish. So it's just closer in towards that wall. Now for the shadows. So this again is a bit of wet in wet where I'm adding in these dark shadows but I'm allowing it to bleed into the hull so we're going to get that soft edge appearing even though there's a slope on the board the the uh, the paint is going, is going uphill and that darker color is going into the uh, those hulls the boats right that far that far smaller boat or cobble as it's called and then these boulders on the right hand side so those uh, areas I left unpainted they're going to be the tops of the boulders so I've just gone in with some dark shadows below now again a tiny bit of spattering So the brush is uh, not got too much water on it now so I can do a few a few sort of drier brush strokes and be a bit more precise with the uh, inside of this boat and the second one
Now to give a bit of definition to the shoreline. Just a few marks to indicate some little boulders and stones and so on at the water's edge. Just a few. And then some posts. And they serve a good purpose to try and connect the foreground with the middle ground. So a useful sort of um, composition uh, aid. Now just lifting out a little bit of the shaded area just to add a, a bit more interest into it a bit of a softness maybe there's uh, it gives the impression of some haziness or maybe it could could be some smoke there on the left hand side so it's a bit easier um, doing these vertical posts using a smaller round uh, synthetic brush And they're not all at the uh, same angle, these posts. And that figure, face, shadow, while I've got this small brush which I tend to use a lot towards the end of the painting just adding in just tiny little bits of details here and there um, it's also quite good for doing splattering and you get smaller smaller blobs of paint um, with a, that synthetic brush you can control it a little bit more than a than a mop brush a soft brush tends to it can be a little bit more difficult to control where where the splattering goes so i can be a bit more precise with this um this synthetic brush here this round one So just going round on the right hand side, some more details, um, little marks here and there, almost in a random way. So I've added in a bit more shade. This is almost pure neutral tint now. And the background um, is still a little bit moist. So we get those soft edges appearing. The shoreline is a lot drier.
just a few lines to help with those reflections. I don't want to try and um, alter those those soft those soft reflections I put in first of all when I was doing the that wet and wet along the shoreline. So I'm just continuing on these lines, lots more darks, which I do tend to use neutral tint quite a lot. Uh, this is a neutral tint I've got is Dan is by Daniel Smith. Quite a nice neutral tint. Uh, the rest of the other colours are from Winsor Newton. But um, the, the I do like the neutral tint from Daniel Smith. It does um, does mix quite well with other colours. So a few windows, chimney tops, little verticals along the roof line. They could be aerials or posts. Just something to break up that skyline and add a bit of interest to the tops of the roofs. So it's still quite moist um, in that shaded area. So I can, with a paper towel, um, something that isn't going to be, something that's quite robust isn't going to disintegrate, I can still be lifting off some of that colour just to bring a bit of softness. As I said, it might give the impression of a bit of haziness to, to the picture maybe the impression of some smoke or something like that on that far bank. So with some darker paint, just skipping over those areas I lifted off, just like I've got uh, that area still, still quite light, and then a bit of darkness to the tops of that wall which perhaps that gives a bit of an impression of a stronger light um, on the the top of the rooftops because I've got that I'm increasing that contrast between the the dark and the light Some dark underneath the rooftops as well. more windows we're getting to the end of the painting now and that of course is 
always difficult to know when to stop. And I guess it it comes a little bit with practice in knowing when to stop when you sort of you start doing too much to the painting and going over the edge as regards um its completeness and uh you just you just start to overdo it. But it just comes just comes with practice. Few more pebbles here and there. It's a very rough um, surface on that shoreline, so um, again, without overdoing it, I'm trying to give the impression of that of that rough surface, picking up on a few areas that are slightly light or slightly dark. And of course, we want to try and smudge it a little bit because of those soft reflections. I don't want too many hard edges in that water. So I'm hesitating here. <laughs> if I can't think of anything else to do, then... Uh, that is, that's the end of the painting. So this is the end painting then, stays in North Yorkshire. A lovely scene with the light coming towards us, a bit of a contrajour, which wor works very well in watercolour, um, with the opportunity to have lots of contrast between the light areas and the dark areas and lots of ranges in values as well light values through to very dark values so quite a simple scene with um, buildings coming down to the shoreline a row of boats and an opportunity to use a few times that wet in wet technique so we start off with the sky um, a little bit of pre-wetting of the paper just a, a few brush strokes across it and then I went in with the the sky which was a cerulean blue and a cobalt blue and it, it gave us some soft effects do you see here um, nice soft edges and going over the uh, rooftops um, and then adding in a bit of the the red of the buildings again we had a bit of a, a soft edge appearing doesn't really matter if that bleeds into the sky there it doesn't matter because you're you're actually compensating against that with the darker values as a as a later stage but um, again that sort of wet in wet appearing um, there um, going adding in that uh, that building color into the sky and then the reflections uh, across the river up the river um, I let things dr dry a little bit um, before adding in those reflections so the paper had sort of gone past the shall I say the moist stage and it was going it was entering the damp phase so it's still um, wet and I could then go in with the um, this reflection color a bit of a thicker pigment so I'm not, not going to get too many um, I'm, I'm sort of reducing the danger of any um, cauliflowers appearing so getting that nice soft edge very roughly done there to to mimic the um, the line of the houses there and I change things around I, I move for example these these boats introduce a couple of boats introduce a figure just to suit the composition uh, another technique I used in a watercolor technique was the lifting out with a paper towel or you can use a dry brush or a brush that's going to soak up some of the moisture 
Again, it's down to timing. Um, if you leave it too late, it's impossible to lift out the color. Do it too early, then you end up with uh, maybe too harder edge. Um, so you've got to practice a little bit with that technique, but it, it just sort of gave the impression perhaps of some haziness um, against that wall, maybe someone starting a fire and smoke drifting across the across the valley so hopefully you like that uh, see more of my paintings up on my uh, main website timwilmot.com as i said at the start of this video if you want to have a go yourself and then get a critique back from me which i normally do as a short two two minute video two or three minute video which i send to you um with uh, my, my critique and, and some extra hints and tips for you. More details, please go up to my Patreon site um, and do a search for Tim Wilmot. You'll find all my details up there and you will find it down in the comments of the description of this video as well. Uh, but hope you like that and I will catch up with you soon. Thank you very much indeed.